Okay, ladies. Today we have our eighth speaker. So we're halfway through. And I would like to introduce Claudia today. It was at the height of Claudia's high fly corporate career that she arrived at a turning point. A meeting in the forest of a spiritual community in the south of India presented her with a vague no notion that she was about to depart from the highway of business success. Little did she know that her life was to radically change. Claudia founded Soul Luxury and now dedicates her time, wisdom, and knowledge to support people who want to live a heart centered life. Luxury and now dedicates In her, her time. work, she draws on a lifelong interest in how our energy field is influenced by our thoughts, beliefs, and emotions, and how this in turn influences our lives. Claudia runs a global community which holds space for conversations, exploring a future based on a new and deeper understanding of self. Working with individuals as a quantum energy coach, she also facilitates retreats and offers personal change programs. She is an author of a guided journal, Your 28 Days to Self-Love, and I Am Every Woman, a collection of transformative life stories. Over to Anu and Claudia. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Claudia. Thank you, Anya. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for being here. Namaste. And that's traditional way in which we meet everybody from India. Uh, so, Claudia, I'm really, I went through something that was very interesting today seemed like that we may not have been able to carry this program forth, which was very interesting. I went for a dental work at one o'clock in the afternoon. By four, there was bleeding in my mouth. I mean, my mouth was filling up with blood as if I don't know what was happening. By six, I gave a call to my dentist and said, I don't know what's happening. It feels as if I'm having a period in my mouth. It was that bad. And by 8.30, he managed to put the bleeding out and I, we're sitting right now and talking. I'm telling you this because it's connected. It's connected with your chapter. It's connected with whatever is happening. And that's the point I knew I had to continue. What does this remind you of, Ruth, in your chapter that you've written? Any idea? Yes, what comes to me right now, um, Anu, um, first of all, I feel for you because, you know, having a, uh, such a bleed is uh, a very uncomfortable situation to, you know, to put it mildly, um, apart from the pain and everything or in addition to the pain. But what, what tells me is we think we have control, but actually it's an illusion. Yes, and it reminded me of your accident. Ah. Could you tell the audience what was that accident about and what were you really doing when you met with an accident? Yes, um, I was, as I said, um, in the fast lane of, of business. Um, I was traveling around the world and a very um, disoriented lifestyle actually now from my perspective because I was everywhere and everything had to be fast, fast, fast. So um, before going on a business trip the next morning, I went to um, the gym um, to quickly um, do some running and I need to go home and I needed to pack and I needed to finish my presentation and I needed to prepare sort out the, 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 my packing because it was a longer trip. And again, that was the energy of fast, 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 fast. Um, and I remember I went into my car and um, I was sitting there. I knew that I did something that I shouldn't have done. I didn't have my seatbelts on because it was only a 200 meters journey. And we know that no matter how long or how short the journey is, um, seat belts are important so I recognize that and I put out my hands up and I wouldn't uh, since then I didn't do it any anymore 
But what happened was, and that was really weird. Um, I drove along that road, which I on my way to my house and from the left, a car came and it was literally, um, I didn't see it. it the car drove into my, um, on, into the driver's side. In Europe, we drive um, on the left side. Um, and suddenly, or what I remember is ambulances. And um, what was fascinating was um, the car accident literally happened outside the house of my very best friend who, um, yeah, who looked after um, me um, in, you know, in his, in his caring way. And ambulance came and he was looking out of the window and he was a stunt to see me. But what was a sign of my madness was um, I had to um, be put on a stretcher. I um, was going inside the ambulance and all what I could scream literally is my laptop, my phone, my mobile phone. That was the only thing I thought of at that moment in time because I was so soaked up because I was in the belief that um, I'm, I'm okay and I'm going on a business trip tomorrow. This is just a quick th something inconvenient. That's how I treated the accident. But actually, um, something transformative um, started as a result of that madness and that accident. Ex accident. Thank you so much, Claudia. It looks like today I went through the same madness. Didn't want to cancel anything. And I knew there was a connection. And I knew that if we continue with what we are doing, something big will open out for you, for me, for everybody who's on this platform, and not just that, for whoever watches this. But it wasn't about being fast for me. It was about keeping my promise. Mm. It reminded me way back in time about my dad and how he would walk. Even if there was a curfew, he wouldn't stop going to work. Mm. But is this really madness, Claudia? And if you can now reflect back, or is it something else going on there? Well, um, underlining, you're absolutely right. Um, the madness um, was driven um, also by a need to honor my commitment because you know shouting my laptop my phone was only for one reason because i was seeing myself being on a plane at seven o'clock in the morning and i looked at that i really sort of went deep into it um is it's the need to you know honor the promise as you say but actually for me um, i discovered something much deeper from that inquiry can you tell us what that was? Yes, um, the constant um, rush was driven by a need to prove myself. Oh. Um, I needed to prove that I am successful. And my idea of success was traveling around the world, having no downtime. I mean, complete illusion. I mean, now I can't even uh, I found it difficult to even uh, to even understand that I had that sort of illusionary concept of being successful. So the more the, for me, the, the faster I was going, the less or the, 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 the more that 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 underlying um, insecurity it is um, was pushed aside. So there were two forces um, at play, but I did not know that there was a force underneath all that rushing around because I saw myself as being successful and having a good time. I did not understand that something else was playing underneath it. And that was like you, Anu, that was of, of my upbringing. I had the same upbringing. If you are sick and you can't go to school, you know, when we were little, um, no, 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 Claudia, you get ready. You go to school and if you still feel unwell at the first break, um, I'll tell your teacher and you can come home. But of course, after you know, once we played with the, with with the, with your 
with your friends, you forgot your little earache or whatever it was. So I, I that's also the upbringing, very strict, um, not strict, no, it's, it's about when you, 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 you promise something, you just do it, it's just automatic. It's an hypnotic statement. It's like almost like you saw your parents doing it. Yes. They don't even have to tell you. Work hard, work hard, go, 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 do it, do it, do it, do it. It's commitment, it's persistence. Do it, do it. Now, if you stop, if you stop, what will happen, Claudia? Exactly. What will happen yeah. if you stop? Well, it took me a very, very long time um, to even um be able to stop um so i couldn't even stop um it was just not even it was not even in it wasn't possible for me it was simply not possible i i believe that i cannot rest i believe that i had to be busy all the time these were all beliefs which um kept me going even on holiday, I would not take a holiday in the traditional sense. I would call it a working holiday because I was catching up with everything at work, which I didn't have time otherwise. I wonder if you thought like I thought today, there is magic behind this whole story. Because when I was going down, I mean, I was like saying bye to my doctor and he happened to come with me in the lift and he said, I need to tell you now it was an emergency. Mm. Mm. I need to tell you now it's an emergency. It was an emergency. Had you not reached in time, we would have to really think what to do about it. So my question to you here is, do you really think there was a saving grace that was saving you on that day? You were not hurt in your body at all, but I there was something that was so hurt there. Absolutely, the craze was with me because the story continued actually. What happened was um, I couldn't fly the next day because for the first time I had no energy. Um, my whole body, I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't even switch off the alarm. Um, I was, my body was like um, totally, no energy, no nothing. I was flat. And that was the most um, frightening um, experience because I didn't even understand that body can have no energy. Um, and um, as a result of this, I also, of the accident, I um, felt big pain in my neck and I decided to um, have it investigated. Um, and the story goes, actually quite a funny story, that the accident happened in, in Frankfurt. I went to um, uh, a doctor and he looked at my you know, body and he said, um, there's nothing wrong with you in your body, but there's something wrong with you in your mind. And I thought, that's a very kind doctor, but you know, I thought, okay. Anyway, he, uh, he um, prescribed me um, massages. I need to go to uh, have some massages. And I thought, that's great. You know, at least it will relieve the pain. But what happened was he told me, I must go to see this person, only this person for the massage. So um, I, um, um, I phoned up, made an appointment. I need to see you immediately. And um, I had an appointment and I went there and it would look, look, everything looked a bit different than a normal, you know, massage um, uh, spa or place. Um, I looked around and I thought, okay, I lay down on, on, on the uh, table and I expected, you know, he doing his work and all what he did is was really strange for me at the time. He used his hands and he moved his hands from the top to the bottom. He asked me some strange questions. And I couldn't work anything out because I thought, when are you going to start to do your work? Anyway, suddenly he said, um, the session is over. And I sort of thought, what is, what was this all about? I mean, I was thought, geez, that's a weird massage. Anyway, um, I left and that evening I felt so trained, so exhausted. So I don't know, something, 
a feeling I never ever had. Of course, now I understand what he did. He worked with energy. He released a lot of trauma. So I understand that, but I, at the time I had no clue. Um, but I sensed something was happening. So I decided to go back. And then I asked him, what do you do? And then I understood that he's a healer. Um, and I was sent by my doctor under pretense to him because my doctor would have known if he would have told me you need to see a healer I would have said no because I didn't even have an understanding of what a healer is so that doctor I can only bow and say thank you for recognizing and feeling what I really needed um, or what my soul needed so um, I thought that was, you know, that was grace. That was divine grace. Thank you so much, Claudia, for that. And um, it really explains things. You know how energy walked into your life. Mm -hmm. The title of your chapter is My Luxury Life Was My Prison. When I was reading through it and when I went through the experience that I did today, and I'm sure there's no coincidence there, I felt that this name wasn't apt at all because it wasn't about the luxury life that was your prison. Can you identify what really was your prison? Yes. Um, my, I, again, I didn't have the, that awareness. Um, I thought my luxury life was my prison for one reason because every time i wanted to make a change in my career i couldn't so i was very attached to that um you know beautiful world i must admit and you know the experience we had i mean some of the experience um were really out of this um world so i was really i sensed that i can't leave because then i won't have that um, lifestyle. Um, but what I didn't understand at the time is that actually my whole self perception, my whole self worth, it was all tied into that bun, into, the, into this bubble um, called luxury life. So for me, um, I felt that that the, the trimmings of, of luxury really kept me present because I didn't allow myself to actually leave or do something different in fact the more you earned the more you convinced yourself that this was your new identity correct but our identity whether it's yours or mine was set back in time by our parents and we copying them like little monkeys and yet you went and created a company called Soul Luxury. If you were so averse to luxury, why would you call it Soul Luxury? Because I was playing on the duality, soul and luxury. Now, the, the, the essence of the soul, everything is pure. And, you know, for me, pure is, you, is, is, is a sense of luxury. And a sense of luxury for me now is peace, it's harmony. It's all that, you know, beautiful, yes, empowering emotions, which um, are the beauty around everything in, is, is can be luxury. Um, but I'm not talking about, you know, the, the luxury I was associated with in the past. It's the different qualities um, on the states of being, um, which I still consider as beautiful as joyful but you know you can't call it so joyful or anything like that so i i just thought um i like the duality of the words thank you so much for bringing that because i was wondering why we were blaming luxury here because luxury really is not the source of where you or i have been um i think our biggest source was uh, we didn't see our parents changing anything they stayed stuck to that role for 30 years after they got married or 40 years or 50 years, they even celebrated it. Yes. And yes. I don't think it's about you going and becoming an executive or earning 
amount of money, we are all stuck in our lifestyle. We are all stuck in a mindset that, oh my God, if I change something horrible is going to happen. We don't like the unknown. Can you throw some light on this? How did you get out of that unknown and make a new world for yourself where you say, you know, you kind of connected and created a new identity for yourself? Thank you. The interesting thing is my earlier life um, was always one of exploration. I was very young and I decided I want to have an international career. I was very young and decided I'd buy a flight ticket from Frankfurt to London and start my life there. So at that time, I was totally detached of anything other than a vision I had set out for myself. And of course, that vision was attachment, um, but that helped me to um, flourish in my um, career. Now, um, what happened is, is when I started building my career, um, the self-image I created got reinforced every time when there was a promotion, every time when there was a big contract coming in. So it got the, 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 the lightness, um, the joyfulness, the ease with which I used to, um, which I, how I used to embrace life, got covered up with all the various labels I put um, onto um, myself. So then that was sort of like, you know, you, I call that stuckness because the labels define, define you. And to really start changing, um, you really need to um, look at your own self. You can't, it's just, you cannot transform or change if you're not looking within. Because it starts from your own perception of your own um, illusions. Now, if somebody and somebody, my, one of my mentors, early mentors told me, um, while I was still attached to that luxury life, even though I was a little bit removed, he said to me, do you know that you live a life of illusion? And I thought, what is he telling me? It's not an illusion, that is reality, it's my life. Now, obviously he was much more um, evolved um, spiritually than myself, so he could see it. Now I can see it. And that's the difficulty. We, before we can change, before we can actually um, transform, we have to really um, address and face our own illusions. And who wants to admit that you know, for 40, 50 years, you were living a, a life of a lie to yourself um, and opening up yourself to a new reality. It's almost like um, pointing the finger, look, you were so stupid for 50 years and now you're waking up. Um, and that is a little bit of a shock to the system when you realize that you are, you were, you are reinforcing or you have been reinforcing your own lie. That's what it is. And I'm not so talking. how important, yeah. how important yeah. Claudia, is accepting whoever you are? Well, that's, that's really what is the work to be done. Yeah. Um, even now when I speak about it, I feel a little bit, um, how do you say, uncomfortable talking about my past because it was still me. Um, and I feel a little bit, you know, I'm thinking how, how silly, how stupid um, were you? But I accepted that I had to experience um, living in that illusion in order to actually free myself. So um, I, I, it's self-acceptance of all aspects of who you are, the good ones, the less good ones. It's, it's really, there's fundamentally what we need to do is to unlearn everything we learned <laughs> and to really go through all our beliefs, literally like a to-do list. I believe this. Okay. Do I still want to believe it? No. Let's reframe it. It's literally belief after belief. I've done the work. I really done it. I thought I need to get to the bottom of it. And it's fascinating what strange beliefs creep in over the years. So um, I, um, I really believe unlearn is the first thing know that you have to unlearn and also accept 
your own, you know, you could call it um, duality, your own silliness, whatever, whatever resonates, but just um, your own, all facets of, of who you are. There's not, it's not bad or good or anything. It's just who we are. And I think it's very important for everybody to, to, to understand the labels we give to something, you know, this is good or this is bad. It's only label because F act actually without the label, everything is neutral. Absolutely. You say my work was literally disfiguring me. Um, I just want to say here, I meet a lot of women and men. I feel none of us are without a slight disfigurement. I feel each one of us could say my work, my family, my addiction. Is it by any chance that all that we are repeating again and again in our life is just becoming something like a routine and our routine is literally disfiguring us? Could you please kindly say a little bit more on this? Thank you. Uh, Anu, you, the, uh, you made a very good point. Yes, our routine is disfiguring us in the sense that our routine, behind a routine, um, our beliefs. Um, like, I need to work hard. So, in fact, beliefs create routine, routine, you know, whatever the routine is, like me working 24-7 um, or at least close to it, um, was literally disfiguring me. Now, I was, um, I, one thing I always did, I believed that because I was putting a lot of stress on my body, the flying and different time zones, that I was, I believed I have to eat healthily and I have, and I believed I have to do a lot of sports. So I did that. I, this belief um, helped me um, to actually, you know, continue doing my, my job because the moment if you don't um, look after your body and you put it under immense stress, we know how quickly a body, you know, can show its, um, yeah, its um, mm, problem areas. So I was very mindful while I was really mad, um, pursuing my career, working crazy, but I did always, I was very mindful to do my yoga in the room. Um, and even if it would only be for five minutes, it didn't matter. It was a point of doing it. You know, the last three days have been very um, interesting days for me. A lot of insights walked in. One of the biggest insight was the repetition that we are doing. Repetition. Yes. The routine, the repetition, the doing things again and again in the same loop and yet wanting a change. It seems kind of doesn't fit in. Either we are in a routine or we are not. And yet we give birth only once to a child. And even if we give birth again, it's never the same. We get married once. The first time you have sex, it's brilliant or it's bad. That first experience leaves a mark in your life. But somewhere our needs are something that we need to repeat again and again transformation also does not happen every day it happens once awareness comes in yes a transformation begins then why are we so running behind a change when we are doing nothing to create that change we are constantly in a repetitive loop can you please throw light on this yes um and i i can share stories about exactly this my soul was craving for change, for transformation, yet I did exactly that, what I always did. So I understood I need to do something different, but I couldn't because I ha hadn't worked on changing my beliefs. Um, so the moment I investigated and I really understood what beliefs are driving my decisions, I was able to start making small changes. But I, I compare myself with a big tanga, you know, a tanga on the open sea. It goes one way. The moment you want to shift it, either right or left, it takes a long time to move because it's heavy, it's grounded. And that's how I felt. I felt like I couldn't move quickly. I It was always a little, a little, a little, but obviously 
a lot, many littles, you know, create um, also a big change. So I had, I remember um, in the early days, the moment I would wake up, I would um, um, get my Blackberry or iPhone, later iPhone, and would start doing my first emails um, in, 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 in bed, literally. And just to break that habit was a big thing because again, my self image got, you know, got in, in, in the way. But what I really then started to do literally, literally, that I wouldn't forget, I would put something outside of my bed, you know, like a book or, a, or anything to remind me of my first thought, I must not touch that pluming phone. I couldn't put it away because it used to, it, 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 you see, it served as, um, as a telephone, um, as a, a wake up, uh, what do you call it, an alarm clock. Now, could I have called, could I board another um, alarm clock? Surely I could. So, you know, this is all that, that complexity, everything is sort of like mished and mashed. So you really have to take yourself, inverted commas, your actions, uh, you have to pu pull them aside and look at them in order to create new, um, new habits. I mean, I literally had to force myself, I had to trick myself in making changes. I love the word tricking yourself. And it looks like we're not even aware that we have so many crutches around us. Like you said, Every day morning when I get up, I used to hold Blackberry or, you know, the phone or whatever it is. Uh, that gave you that image, you know, the minute you hold it, you have your power back in your space. Yes. A lot of people hold their children like that, mm -hmm. like a crutch. And a lot of people hold maybe even a spectacle like that. They get out of the bed and the first thing that they do is, it's just, it feels as if we all have our crutches, but... God help us if our crutches are not are toxic. But I don't know which crutch is not toxic because people will hold on to their husbands, to their parents. And if they are not there, if the job is not there, if the laptop is not there, if the child is not there that you're using as a crutch to continue your life, what happens then, Claudia? Well, um, then the joy starts, actually. Then the real <laughs> journey starts. Because then you are starting to look inwards. And in the beginning, it's very difficult because you find things you don't want to own up to it. It's normal. Um, as I said, you know, you, we, we have been living so long in our own illusion that suddenly, you know, you're waking, awakening, you're great, gaining awareness and you can see what you're actually doing to yourself. Um, but once you have overcome that, um, part of of the process you are starting if you do your forgiveness work and other work you are starting to build a connection with your own inner self and you're creating a new relationship with your own self now in my case i can only i can say that in these days where i i was in 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 my business I didn't have a relationship with myself, even though I thought, but I didn't. Um, I was, the relationship was with my conditioning. And I was not in control of that relationship, my conditioning, my beliefs were in control of me. But now that relationship has changed and um, that my relationship is to my own self and only that inner self now um, is, a, is, is oh, I follow the inner self when it speaks rather than the conditioning or the outside world. I would now, I always check in with myself. Does it feel right? Is this what I want? Does it bring me joy? Um, and there is, and it takes time to develop that inner relationship because we're not used to it. Right, Claudia. And it feels as if back in time you were collecting luxury. Today you're collecting women, very strong women who are ready to be vulnerable and talk about their vulnerability. Now, I mean, you were always collecting something, but today you're collecting more meaning, maybe more stories, maybe. And each story brings an awakening. Is there any such story? 
that you heard that really touched your heart and you felt, oh my God, she just resonates me. Or I just see a reflection of me down there in her story. Um, in fact, many of the stories in the book um, deeply affected me. Because one thing, um, I'm, I'm very, I feel, and I did not know that at the time in, during my career, but now I know that it was part of my success. I really feel other people. So um, when, when anybody goes through a difficult time, I feel it. Um, and, you know, life throws things um, onto us. Um, I, I feel very, um, uh, for me, there's a lot of um, sadness coming along um, when there is struggle, um, all, all kinds of struggle. Um, I, I, I really feel for, for people and I, and I think this is why I'm actually doing the work I'm doing because I, I genuinely feel um, but I do also know, and that's why I would why I love to work with strong women is that um, we all have the capacity to um, overcome our own challenges. And that what gives me an incredible energy because I believe that most of us, and I'm saying that as a, you know, as a statement here, um, we are, for the reasons we discussed, Anu, we are not living our full potential. We are letting conditioning, our, our habits, which have come in over years, run our lives. And I really, really um, believe in the vastness of opportunities we, are, um, we have access to. And that's what I, why I love with, to work with women who are strong, who actually put the work in their own transformation. Because it doesn't come, the beginning doesn't come without effort. And I guess because I'm, I'm very, you know, I put effort into something, I guess that sort of like makes me feel part of a tribe. You know, we all try to overcome our own self and how how wonderful it is to celebrate together our own, um, you know, courage and multiply that and give support. So I found that a very empowering space and I learn a lot um, and I, 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 my heart opens. It feels as if you're saying, and I connected with the we, you found me. It really feels as if you found yourself when you found a community, mm -hmm. when you found people who were speaking the language that you were feeling and you were sensing. So uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of what you've written about fear and freedom. And I would really like you to throw light on what stops us. Is it only fear? And is freedom really what we are chasing or is it community that we really want? Um, that's a good question, and it has got different layers. Um, and I've been thinking and reflecting a lot about um, freedom. Um, for me, um, it started off realizing that I, I'm not free. Um, and I wanted to freedom from my own complexities. Um, that's the first part and you know I went on this journey but what freedom now has is has gone to a next level freedom real freedom is the oneness with all when we are no longer identified with um, with our you know with our small self with our um, unique you know with our yeah with our own self but really embrace that we are one with everything that's for me the space of freedom wow so it, it's quite a shift from traveling alone in the planes from being in this luxury spaces by yourself 
play, connecting that luxury with and extending it to each soul and connecting it in a different way. So um, how does one become successful? How does one make sure that there is, you are not leading an intoxicated uh, lifestyle? How does one create this image? Is there anything called perfection or is it just again an illusion? Anything which is um, coming from a place of um, pursuing something, being it perfection. I mean, I, I, I still have that notion, I need to be perfect. Um, but that is actually in limitation because everything in its own right is perfect. That's the point. I, uh, the moment we allow that space, um, that, that space of um, accepting who we truly are, then no perfection is needed because we are perfect in that space. Perfect. So, Claudia, if we are, sorry, uh, but if we are perfect in our place, then why are we changing anything? Well, um, you, you want, I mean, we are all, I mean, we are starting from a place that we are perfect, but we want to change we may have the desire to change because we want to really um, feel that um, freedom. And that, that requires change because if, as long as we identified with being a mother or being a successful entrepreneur, whatever that is, we are not allowing ourselves that freedom. So we need to do some inner, um, inner inquiry, self-reflection. What does it actually mean to me, freedom? Now, it may mean something different to you, to somebody else. And as I said, um, this has got different, that, 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 that word freedom has got different layers. You know, freedom may just be for one person um, having time to go on holiday um, by her or himself. Maybe that's a kind of freedom, but there are many different layers um, of freedom. And once we are, once we are starting to change our awareness, once we are allowed to see things differently, we realize that we are stuck in a certain matrix. Um, so it's a natural opening for us wanting to change because at the end of the day, um, Arno, we are all seeking joy, happiness, and, and freedom. That's what we are here for. We are here to experience bliss. Absolutely. And um, so I feel uh, really the freedom uh, is, and in fact, I would really like to ask Anya and Sharon and Christine here if they are okay to, what do they think is freedom if they can, you know, just put over here for a minute because I just feel this is such an important question. And I'm constantly asking myself, is it the freedom that we need or is it that we want to feel belonged? Or is there freedom in belonging? Is that what we are seeking for? Are we seeking for freedom from our routine? Are we seeking from freedom of having relationships and moving on and you know, being this yogi who sits all by himself in isolation. And just like Claudia said, it could have various different shades. But what I'm really beginning to understand is that we are thinking that our prison is because of certain things. Our prison is because we have become maybe from a small sparrow a big eagle, and we're still flying like the sparrow and haven't really reached where we believe we need to reach. So it still again comes from what we think and it could be an illusion. It's a very, very, you know, like layer on layer, like you said. So I would really like Claudia to answer this. And deep within, if 10 years later, there was a man standing there with a magical mirror like 
he stood back in time and was asking you, Claudia, what really is freedom? What would she say? And what would the nail, the red nail signify at that time? Thank you. In the, in the past, um, I didn't even think about freedom because I was so entrenched in that other self-image. But coming to your point, um, Arno, freedom and community for me um, are two completely different things. Um, a community is very powerful when we are on that journey of change, of transformation, because a community um, uh, gives support, is there unconditionally. Um, when we stumble, um, we have support. When we need to you know, open our hearts, there is a trusted space. So the community I see um, as a support structure for one's own journey. The moment we, um, um, the moment I become dependent on a community, I need to ask myself, what am I lacking in myself to be dependent on something? It does. It's not only you know dependency. There's always a lack of something. Um, so that's one thing. Um, now, as I said, for me, freedom has is taking uh, deeper meaning as I continue to um, um, self inquire. Um, and I can really truly feel that freedom, which my soul is seeking, when I'm in this um, space, I can only call it oneness, where I'm no longer identified with my little self um but that space is um for me at least not yet easily um accessible so um a lot of meditation is still required but sometimes i have moments and it's just and it comes um but that's um for me personally work in progress thank you so much i love your honesty we are all work in progress yes Till the last day of our life. That's correct. And I, I love the way you were very beautifully and allowing yourself to say, hey, I don't know it all. It's not a big deal. No. And, 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 and that's a brilliant place to be in. Just simply being. And, and just simply Anu, being. And Anu, actually to your point, I now am I, I'm really happy not knowing because that space of not knowing allows me self-inquire um, and to actually allows me to question with an open mind, um, with an open heart. Anything I don't know is a beautiful space because there's maybe something in there for me with, with, with my awareness now which wants to be seen and which wants to come into my awareness. Um, at the end of the day, everything is consciousness. And, and you know, the great thing is the moment you become aware of, um, you know, how we, how, how, our, how our conditioning, how our beliefs and thoughts create a reality, once you understand that, and once you understand that consciousness is all that is, and you can bring it forth, I mean, a whole new world is opening up. And that world is so beautiful, it's so joyful, it is so empowering. It's, it's sometimes I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, wow, and I'm not doing anything. So it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful space. I'm, I'm so happy you've experienced that space. Truly, uh, it's a gift if someone can experience just being and just experiencing the, I don't know whether you just experience silence or whatever it is, wherever you are, you can be in a crowd and yet be okay. You can be in an accident and yet be okay. You can be with people who you hate and yet be okay. And you could be in the worst disfigurement of your life and yet be okay. And I think it's this whole idea that we have that we should not be okay. It's not okay. Because if God doesn't make any mistakes, 
And the universe has never done anything without an accident. There are no coincidences. There are no accidents. Then the life that we are living is the life we've chosen. And if you've chosen the life that we are living, then why aren't we accepting the life that we are living? So I would really invite here Anya, um, Sharon and Christine, if you have any questions, or would you like to also talk about uh, a little bit around freedom, that would be really, really nice. I'm just going to, anything that you guys want to add, I'd like to add with regard to freedom. Thank you. For me, Anu, freedom is where I'm at now, is a lot being able to, to be me, free to be me and do what I do. Because in the past, I had imposed, self-imposed other people's restrictions or thoughts or whatever judgments on me. So now that I've grown to a point where I, those things... I have detached from or actually moved away from or don't allow to affect me, then allow me to be, to have freedom. And then, then I do what I want. <laughs> and I don't have, you know, I, 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 I don't react to the consequences. Sometimes you could say that's a bit harsh to some people, but then in other ways, I've, I, I have rest had restricted myself too many times in my life because of others. So my freedom is because I've found who I am and what I want to do and how I react. And that's, that's where I am at. So, yeah. That's so beautiful. It's like we are downloads of everyone. A mm. mom, a dad, a grandparents, they thought that was right. And I think we need to fast from all this, like really do a fasting from our downloads, at least for a day, and just try searching who we really are, because I feel we don't even know ourselves. We are just merely downloads. And that repetition is repeating again and again. So, so beautifully said. I really value what you're saying right now. Uh, Sharon or Anya, would you like to add? For me, I have been free actually my whole life. Wow. I, but now since three years that I retired, I have more time for myself, which I didn't have before. But there is no, I, I live in the flow, I would say. There is not for me like I need to concentrate on getting rid of this or that or whatever. It's, I just live in a flow and I'm enjoying it. I just, I let things happen as they come. And yeah, there's, there's no agenda behind, you know? I mean, I don't know how to explain. I, I just, I feel free. Like I always say, wow. I have no fear, you know? I have no fear. I just go and do things. And, and if it doesn't work out fine, then I try something different. But there is no, I value the time I have for myself now. This, this is really uh, like, for me, like big time. And yes, I do lots of education at the moment and, and all these things, but everything comes naturally. It's a flow. It's not like I have to do this or I need to go there or whatever. And I've seldomly, I've always been happy, but I'm very happy since three years. I, I, I feel complete. Oh my God, I'm so lucky. I mean... So lucky. Thank you for that insight. Sharon, would you like to add anything? Thank you. Oh, sure, thank you. It's just been amazing. Um, I, I can really re relate to what Claudia was saying about freedom when you're completely at one with, um, I've had moments where, as you, you know, I'm with lots of people and I just think, I'm so at peace. I don't want anything else. 
But you know, that's where not the gro growth is in there. The, because you're then comfortable with everything. The growth is when you question. Uh, for me, freedom is questioning and finding, finding, questioning and finding. And oh my goodness, Claudia knows and Anya knows for the last 18 months of question asked, found answers, question more. So for me, the freedom is to really be with this wonderful tribe and to be able to speak without, I know, without being judged, without, um, you know, it's acceptance, acceptance. Um, and, and there's definitely work in progress here. So, you know, freedom is like, Every day, I just think, I don't even know if the word is freedom. Freedom um, is such a big word. You know, when I, when I, I, think, I think of freedom, my, my, as you can see, my um, Indian, my parents were in India fighting for freedom for India. And that was freedom, you know? And I was thinking, whoa, what is that? And, you know, we, they gave us the life we have because of the choices they made. And so freedom is, I think, is a really strong, powerful word. And for me, it's work in progress and to be able to speak without judgment and acceptance, people accepting me. I've spoken with my open heart to all these ladies here. So that's, does it make sense? Yes, it does. It does, definitely. So um, I'm going to ask Claudia, one last question, and then we will conclude this. Claudia, you heard everybody talking about freedom, and it feels to me that as long as there is fear, freedom is going to be part of it. It's almost like if there is light, there are shadows. But there is no science that talks about shadows. We only learn about the light energy. And somewhere, it feels as if, and this is the insight I got today morning, and I really want to ask you about it because you've been through a lot of transformation yourself. And if anybody else wants to answer it, very good. I realized today morning that we know we are dead when we have no shadows left. When we are alive, we are full of light and we do have shadow which follows us if there is light. And yet we look at the shadow and say, that's not the part of me. I don't want to accept it. I want to change it. I want light all the time. So is it possible to have life without shadows? Claudia, this one is for you. And I really, really acknowledge everyone on the Facebook who's been writing. Uh, Louisa is there, she's been writing so beautifully. Um, yes. Life without shadows. Wow. Yes. That is not a human experience. A human experience has light and darkness or shadow. The shadow is there for the light to be seen as light. And equally, the shadow is there for light to transmute the shadow. And that is life and that is evolution. And light and shadow are part of a human experience. And we want to own it um, and honor it because that what makes us grow, what makes us um, the people who we are with the smiles, with the tears, um, with the heart open, with the heart broken. That's really what life is. It's the, 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 the complexity, the emotions, the, that's life. Um, and in that complexity, we like to make peace with our own complexity. And that's the path. That's why we are here. Thank you so much. So today to conclude this session, 
and Anya will do that, but I just want to say this. I today decide to connect my shadow with my light so that we are all in the light and we can respect the shadows of our life because they gave us the light to give that light and shadow to our next generations. Thank you, Claudia. Thank, Thank you, you so Anya. much. Thank you for my heart. And Anya, I would really want you to say a few words, each one of you who is here for Claudia, for being so brave. It's not easy to keep getting questions after questions. I didn't give her any questions before. None of these did I ask her actually. None of these before. So I'm really grateful, Claudia. I'm really I'm, grateful to each and every one of you. Thank you for- Yeah, you, know, you have, uh, when you talk about life and shadow, it's like death and life. Um, everything has two, two sides. And we have to accept there's always the word and in between. It's it's dark, it's light, it's uh, high, it's down, it's up, it's, you know, there's always two to it. And we have to accept the two. And I thought we had a fantastic session today. Um, it was nice. Sharon, thank you for joining. And... Uh, Every time we talk, uh, it goes deeper and deeper. Mm -hmm. And we all take something home again, learn again. And I know I thank you for being here today where we were thinking about maybe canceling the session and um, It was meant to be that it does take place today. And thank you very, very much. Christine, thank you for coming. And uh, looking forward to next week. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you, Anu. Thank you, Anya. Thank you, um, Goddess um, Sharon and Christine. For your support without that community i wouldn't be where i am and i deeply appreciate it i learned so much um and i was really looking forward to being interviewed by the goddess Anu, the queen of questions um thank you very <laughs> thank much thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you and i hope thank you feel you. well with your yes be well <laughs> <laughs> You know it, what it you be should, You know what you need to take is a glass of whiskey and gar gargle. <laughs> okay. It really helps. It really helps. Oh, okay. yeah, just a small glass. You know, you I don't would be eat. tempted to take it down, actually. No, you don't swallow it. You <laughs> gargle <laughs> with it. I know that. <laughs> We're still on live, Anya. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye, Facebook friends. Bye. Bye.